Hello, you're watching Eye on Africa here on France 24. I'm James Creedon. These are our headlines this evening. International pressure is mounting on Guinea's ruling military. The African Union has suspended the country after a coup d'etat last weekend. An ECOWAS delegation has also visited Conakry on Friday. We'll hear more from James Andre in Conakry. It's the Ethiopian New Year on Saturday, but celebrations are likely to be very low key this year as war rages on in the north of the country. Also, hyperinflation. More on that coming up. 20 African artists from 13 different countries are in Abidjan for the annual FEMOA Music Festival. It's the 13th edition of the event. We'll bring you more on that later on in the show. Thank you for watching. First, the West African bloc ECOWAS suspended Guinea. Now the African Union has done the same. All this after President Alpha Conde was arrested last weekend and special forces seized power in Conakry. ECOWAS sent in mediators on Friday who have uh, since departed. The bloc counts 15 members and uh, the foreign ministers of Nigeria, Ghana, Burkina Faso and Togo were part of that high-level delegation. Earlier I spoke to James Andre in Conakry about their visit. It was a high-level delegation, you said, were, that was led by Ghana's Foreign Affairs Minister Shirley Ayorkor Bochwe. Now, the delegation landed here in Conakry around 10 a.m. The whole city was quite closed down with roads blocked and indeed a heavily armoured convoy to go and get these ministers and bring them back to a hotel here in central Conakry, which is called the Millennium Hotel. Now, that hotel was completely closed down and there the delegation had to wait for about a couple of hours hours before Colonel Mamadi Dumbuya arrived in an armoured vehicle accompanied by a group of his elite special forces, the men that indeed staged this coup here in Guinea and arrested Alpha Conde, the ousted president. Now, after a talk that lasted for a little over an hour, the whole delegation, plus uh, the uh, men of Mamadi uh, Dumbuya, moved on to the Special Forces headquarters. Now, that is opposite uh, the People's Palace, right in the centre of Conakry. It is a heavily fortified military base, and there, the delegation were allowed to meet Alpha Conde, who is being held in that heavily fortified building in central Conakry ever since he was arrested on Sunday. After that, the delegation headed back to the airport around 5 p.m. and left. And, uh, James, one of the main objectives of the visit was to secure Alpha Conde's release. Uh, what happened in that regard? Was there any progress at all made? Now, indeed, uh, the delegation was allowed to meet Alpha Conde. Now, they didn't leave with Alpha Conde, but, uh, indeed, Shirley Ayorko Bochwe spoke to us just before she boarded her plane uh, back to uh, Ghana. This is what she had to say to France 24. Doing OK. We, we had a very uh, good conversation with him. He was able to talk to us, understand what we're saying. He responded very well. So both physically and mentally, I think he's, he's doing OK under the circumstances. We, we had a response also uh, from the junta itself, and uh, that was uh, by the voice of Fanta Sisse. Fanta Sisse is the acting foreign affairs minister, and she was the spokesperson today of uh, the junta at power, in power here in Guinea. And we asked her, we asked Fanta Sisse, has the release of uh, Alpha Conde be secured today. Are you going to release him? This is what she told us. It is difficult to respond to this request immediately in these conditions. But yes, this is going to happen. They've repeatedly said, this is the father of the Ghanaian nation, father of all Ghanaians. So it seemed important. His freedom is also important. So this is likely going to happen. <laughs> Okay, so some attempt to, to move forward on those requests. And another, so indeed, a, a, another ECOWAS objective, uh, James, the, the so-called return of constitutional order. 
Yes, absolutely. Now, indeed, Shirley Ercourt Botchwe also spoke to us. Now, she said uh, that indeed there had been a discussion, a quality exchange, if you will, with uh, the uh, Colonel Mamadi Dumbuya. She said he was open. Uh, she said uh, that uh, he was frank in the way he addressed ECOWAS, and that was satisfactory. Basically, uh, she said that ECOWAS had engaged with uh, the new rulers of Guinea. She said it was an important country for ECOWAS, and she said that now the delegation would return to speak to the heads of state uh, that are the leaders, in effect, of ECOWAS, uh, so that they could decide what the next move would be. But quite clearly, it seems uh, there was a, a, an exchange, there was an engagement between uh, this regional bloc that's very important here, of course, in West Africa, and the new rulers of Guinea. That was James Andre speaking to me a little bit earlier. Now, despite the diplomatic pressure, Guinea and civil society has welcomed the military coup that brought down uh, Alpha Conde last uh, Sunday. Many Guineans say that the people have been badly mistreated under his regime for decades. Earlier this week, some 70 political prisoners were released, including well-known figures opposed to a third term for Alpha Conde. Sarah Sacco and Malik Diakite sent us this report from Conakry. Tired but happy, Funi Kimange is overjoyed to be reunited with his family. The activist was released on Tuesday evening by CNRD Putschists from the National Committee for Rally and Development. Opposed to Alpha Conde's third term, he was convicted of undermining state security during the October 2020 demonstrations. He served more than eight months in prison and fell ill behind bars. Now, once again free, he says he's ready to accompany the transition process promised by the CNRD. La démocratie ne va pas de soi. C'est pourquoi il faut se battre chaque jour. Democracy cannot be taken for granted. That is why we must fight every day for it. Otherwise, we risk losing it. We're going to open working sessions or meetings with the CNRD if necessary so that we can discuss the process of democratic transition quickly because it is necessary. Seventy-nine political prisoners were released by the CNRD on Tuesday evening. The gesture has given hope to civil society, which has continued to denounce Arthur Conde's authoritarian regime and the instrumentalization of justice. Bailo Barry, president of a human rights NGO, says the new authorities must keep their promises. It was not the fight against a man, but against a system. Today we can say that Mr. Alpha Conde is gone, thank God, but his men are still here. So one has to be careful. In the new configuration, some cannot be included in the new team. Otherwise, they will lead us to failure, and we don't want to relive the Dadi scenario in the Republic of Guinea. As for historic opposition leader Selu Dalendiello, he said he's both relieved and worried for the future of Guinea. To Ethiopian extra, it's the new year as of Saturday. Africa's second most populous country adheres to a 13-month calendar that begins in September. It runs seven to eight years behind the Gregorian calendar, so Saturday will be the first day of 2014 for Ethiopians. Now, celebrations are usually full of feasting, song and dance, as you'd expect. But this year, a cloud hangs over festivities, in particular for ethnic Tigrayans. The economy is also in turmoil, with inflation in excess of 30% last month for food. Wasim Cornet has more. At this market in Addis Ababa, it's not the crowd you'd expect to see, just hours away from the start of the Ethiopian New Year. Many here aren't in the mood for a party. For almost a year now, war has raged across the country's north, and that has had dire consequences on the nation's economy, as well as an impact on Ethiopians' purchasing power. According to the United Nations, war in the Tigray has cost the country some $1 billion. Fighting has also disrupted supplies, and this business owner is worried. Already valued us. And that's 
The government has continued its warlike rhetoric calling for the destruction of Tigrayan rebels, but many of the people doing their New Year's shopping here only want one thing, peace. But peace doesn't seem to be a priority for either side. In his New Year's message, the head of the Tigray People's Liberation Front told his followers they wouldn't rest until their enemies are destroyed. It's been a major event in the cultural calendar for West Africa and beyond since its launch in 2008. FEMUA is taking place in Abidjan, the city known for its eclectic nightlife, welcomes artists from across the continent every year for FEMUA. This year, there's a determination to get back to proper festive form after the pandemic. Our journalists in Abidjan have been talking to the founders and the artists. Today, young people are the most reluctant to get vaccinated. So during this festival, we will promote vaccination. We will first of all try to approach young people, tell them that we can live with this virus if we use the available tools. That's why FEMUA is the first sub-Saharan cultural event to propose vaccination centers on site so that those who are still hesitant can get their shot. This has been a tough time for everyone, but we tried to adapt. We learned how to organize events with safety measures. But now coming back on this big stage during FEMUA, I'm very excited. I'm looking forward to it and can't wait to share this moment with this new great public of Abidjan. And we'll leave you with the, some music from Zahara, one of uh, the performers who is in Abidjan, having uh, flown in from South Africa for uh, the Femme Festival. This song is Umfazi, featuring Kirk Olum. Thanks for watching Eye in Africa. Strength of a woman Comes from within The United States has conducted an operation that killed Osama bin Laden, the leader of Al-Qaeda. We know how to go after terrorists and to kill them. But one thing we haven't worked on is how do we prevent terrorists from becoming terrorists. It's a disaster geopolitical major. Uh, and it, look what it did. We're still fighting. I mean, we've got troops over there. People are still dying. What we did do is we gave rise to Mr. El-Zakari and ISIS. For the next episode, tune in tomorrow at the same time and watch our full programme on Saturday, September 11th.